Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Wild Geese Virtual Shebeen. The Shebeen is where we talk with interesting people in the worldwide Irish community about their diverse interests and talents. Today, we'll be discussing the bogs of Ireland. This fascinating landscape has been a source of energy and mystery for the people who have lived around it for millennia. All your friends will want to join us in the Shebeen tonight, so please share the link for this broadcast on social media right now. My name is Kelly O'Rourke, and I'm here in my home in Connemara, surrounded by bog lands, actually, here on the west coast of Ireland. And we're really glad that you've joined us. If you're a member of the Wild Geese and you're watching us live, we encourage you to interact with us via the main chat room on thewildgeese.irish. If you're not a member, you will need to sign up for a free profile on the Wild Geese in order to chat with us. You can also tweet at us at the Wild Geese if you have any questions. Our guest in the She Beans today is Benny Clavin from Ogre Skin Care, who will share the unique way that her company uses the Irish bog as a health and beauty resource. Welcome in, Benny. Thanks, Kelly. We're so glad to have her here with us today. Um, yeah, before yeah. we speak with Benny, I actually have a special treat for you. Um, I had the opportunity to interview one of the most respected archaeologists in Ireland, Dr. Eamon Kelly. He's recently retired from his position as the Keeper of Irish Antiquities at the National Museum of Ireland. He's also the foremost expert on Irish bog bodies. And if you've never heard of these, um, you are in for a treat learning about this. It's very interesting. He was featured on the BBC special, The Body in the Bog, and he's just a fascinating guy to talk to. Uh, earlier this week, I traveled out further into Connemara from my home to interview Dr. Kelly, and we're going to see now his take on the bogs of Ireland. Bog was a very, very special place. Um, the ancient Irish believed in sun worship. But now you have to remember that ancient Ireland was covered by great oak trees, great oak woods. So there was a canopy almost everywhere you went. So if you wanted to go and observe the sky, you could go out onto a mountain top, you could go out into a lake, maybe onto a, an island in the lake, or you could go out on a peat bog. And all of those places were places where we know ritual activity took place. Now, the Irish conceived of the, the bogs as a red landscape. Mm -hmm. the, the peat itself was considered to be red. And we have a description of uh, the god Dodderga, where a king was ritually killed, one of the great stories, Dodderga's hostel. Um, the king Conora dies in this, in this, in this particular story. At Selwyn, Halloween, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but Dalderg is described, and he has he has red cheeks and and, and, and red eyebrows, and that's the colour of the peat. Um, he has a, a green a green cloak, which of course is the vegetation on top of the bog. But he, he wears a, a, a white short with a white hood, with a red speckled insert. Now you think, what's that hmm. about? Well, that is the bog cotton. Uh. And the bog cotton has a red, has a red speckle sure. at the end of the stalk. Okay. So you, you've actually got a, a description of a god that is based on an, ob, an observation of this landscape. So the peat is red, and you say, well, why? The, in ancient times, people said, why is the peat red? Well, the peat is red because the sun at night goes under the ground. Oh, is it? And the bog is an is is an opening into the other world. Okay. It's an entry point into the other world, and it is it is coloured. The soil there is coloured by the sun when it's resting in its chamber at night. So Dr. Kelly, how much can we know about the identity of these people, um, their lifestyle, just by looking at the bodies themselves? Okay. Well, the first thing we can say is that uh, all of the prehistoric bog bodies of men who were murdered because there are other categories of bodies as well from a later period um, they're all uh, uh, mature adults uh, between the ages of 25 and 40 uh, we don't have women and children mm -hmm. um, so they seem to be a particular group um, the research which I've undertaken suggests that these are the bodies of 
ancient kings whose kingship for some reason or other has failed and they have been uh, sacrificed uh, to the goddess to whom they were wed at their inauguration ceremony and replaced by a new king. Mm. In other words, the goddess has been given a new consort that will return her to fertility and the people will will be, will, will be looked after mm. as a consequence of that. Now, there are a number of indications that, that show that these are men uh, of, of high status. In the first instance, um, when we look at the hands uh, of, of, of a number of them, where the hands are well preserved, like in old Cran Man, for example, um, there's absolutely no calluses or marks of, at all on his hands. This is a man who never engaged in manual work, and his fingernails are beautifully manicured. Hmm. Now, we know that ancient Irish kings were forbidden to undertake physical work. If they did that, they would lose their status. They would be reduced to the ranks, as it were. So ancient kings did not engage in, in manual labour. In the case of uh, Cloney Cavan Man, uh, he had a very, uh, it's a bog body from County Meath, he had a very unusual hairstyle. It was a, sort of a ridge of hair down the centre of the head, which was held in place uh, by a type of a hair gel which used uh, a pine resin from pine trees that grow in the Pyrenees mountains between France and Spain. Mm -hmm. So here was somebody who could command the resources necessary to uh, acquire very Imported expensive... Imported hair gel. <laughs> well, very expensive yeah. foreign imports. Oh, okay. I mean, you, you need considerable wherewithal for that. Okay. Um, so these are the types of indications. Also, uh, we can see that they were very well nourished. Mm. Um, you know, these were, these were men who, who were you know, living, uh, living well within within those societies. In the case of Old Crown Man, he had a very substantial uh, meat-rich diet. Mm. So lots of lots of uh, 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 of steak and uh, and so on. And this can be so. The, the stomach is actually preserved. Is that how you tell this? Or no. Um, it, well, the stomach was preserved in, in in that instance, but that wasn't how we we could work out uh, the diet of. Old Crown Man, we are what we eat, okay. and uh, di different types of food leave different chemical traces, and those chemical traces are left in our hair, right. and as our hair grows, it leaves a continuous record huh. of the of the chemicals present from your diet. So by looking at that, we can tell whether you've got a substantially uh, meat-rich diet or a substantially vegetable-rich diet. So there are a number of indications, but in the case of Old Crohan Man as well, his stomach contents were present, and unlike his normal diet of meat, he got a final meal of cereals and buttermilk. Now that's quite significant in terms of a ritual meal, mm. because all of the all of the accounts relating to Irish kingship and the duty of kings tells us that. The king must, through his marriage with the goddess, who is the land itself, he must ensure uh, an abundance of corn and milk for the people. Mm. So when we see this ritual meal, we can assume that perhaps something has gone wrong, maybe the crops have failed and so on. This king is being fed the very things that he is to take into the other world with him uh, to seek uh, the generosity of the goddess okay. and atone for the sacrifice okay. of her of her spells. Um, so Ned, tell us how it is that a body comes to be preserved in a bog, because these are not skeletons. They actually have skin and hair and fingernails and fingerprints. How is it that the, the bog um, preserves these soft tissues so well? There are actually a number of reasons why the bogs uh, preserve human tissue. Um, first of all, the bogs contain tannic acid. And tannic acid is, 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 is what's used to tan hides to make leather. So it's this naturally occurring tannic acid which converts the, the skin into, into leather. Um, there are also the, 
the sphagnum moss, which is one of the main constituents of, of, the, of the Irish raised bogs in particular, um, has an antibacterial uh, quality to it. In fact, it was used as uh, bandages, as, mm -hmm. as, as uh, wound dressing uh, during the First World War. Okay. Um, so that kills off bacteria, and of course the bacteria is, is required to break down the human body and decompose it. And the general lack of oxygen as well mm. in, in, in the bog uh, inhibits microbial action and so on. So all of these factors um, uh, operate to, 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 to preserve and mummify the body. Okay. Um, there's some uh, unhappy aspects to the bog as well. The bogs being very acid, they destroy the DNA in the bodies. Okay. So you don't have an opportunity of checking out the DNA. And also, uh, the bone uh, within the body being alkaline mm -hmm. is attacked by the acid, so very often the bone is completely gone, even okay. though the body is preserved. Huh. That's so interesting. So they're, they're not mummified <coughs> by any intentional human action. It's a natural mummification, actually. No, it seems there was no deliberate intention to mummify the bodies. Okay. Um, we have a reference in one of the early Irish annals to uh, a king of Tara who was killed under mysterious circumstances, or died under mysterious circumstances. And 40 years later, he was dug up by his son who succeeded him in the kingship. And the annals say that the body of the king was perfectly preserved. And this was a matter of great surprise to the men okay. of Erin. So at least the analysts weren't aware Preserved in quantities okay. of the bones, uh, oh, according to that report. Yeah. Oh, that is Late, I mean, we, we have stories uh, in, in, in modern folklore which describe the bogs as places which are entering portals to the, to the other world. And uh, we want particular story of, uh, of a man who uh, is being disposed of by his neighbours uh, because they want to rob all his cattle. It's all to do with cattle, everything in Ireland is to do with cattle. <laughs> okay. They want his cattle and his land. So it's about ownership of land and ownership of cattle. So they put him in a bag and they, they're taking him off to throw him into a bog hole. But it's a very hot day, so they put the bag down and go in for a drink. And uh, uh, somebody comes by and he sees there's somebody in the bag and inquires what's up here. So the guy in the bag says, uh, I've been taken off to be married to a rich princess, but I don't want to marry her. So anyway, they change places. <laughs> right. Right? But it's very interesting that the reference is to marriage to a princess, yeah, because like the it's married to all the elements of the yeah. ancient tales are there. And anyway, the guy's taken off, uh, the, the stranger then ends up down the bog hole. So when the murderers arrive back, they're amazed to see the intended victim standing surrounded by loads of cattle because he's robbed all their cattle by this stage. <laughs> and saying, good Lord, what's this all about? So the intended victim then says, well, I have to thank you guys, you know, for, uh, for throwing me into that bog hole. He said that was the entrance to the other world. And I got a fantastic welcome from, 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 from the she, from the, from the fairy people. And they have rewarded me. I sang them a few songs and they have rewarded me with all these cattle. So then the two guys go and they run back to the bog and they dive in and that's the end of it. But that story, there's a 19th century story. I think the earliest version I found of that story is about 1907. Okay. Right? But it has all the elements. Sure. It has all of the elements uh, of the story that's told in the Kingship and Sacrifice exhibition. Yes, indeed. Which we can now pr project back 4,000 years. I think that's quite an extraordinary range, and it can't just be coincidence. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. I've learned so very much. I had read a lot of your work already and watched some, some video, and but I've learned so much more even today. So I really, really appreciate this opportunity, and thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with us, Dr. Kelly. You're very welcome. Cheers. Very welcome. <laughs> Pleasure. A little bit there. Um, at, when we turned the camera off, uh, Dr. Kelly insisted that I call him Ned and continued to chat with me for at least another hour and tell me about all of his archaeological adventures. And there was a murder investigation on his family's patch of bog when he was younger, and he was 
part of an FBI sting operation in Boston to apprehend people who were stealing Irish artifacts. He's basically Indiana Jones, Irish version. So um, just just a fascinating guy and um, and so so interesting. Now those bog bodies um, are actually a couple of the ones that he was speaking about there are actually on display at the National Museum of Ireland even right now. So if you do come to Ireland and you're in Dublin, that is you absolutely have to go there and, and check out the Kingship and Sacrifice exhibit is is where those bodies are to be found. So right from bog bodies, the next logical topic in our discussion is obviously. Skin care. Well, you might not have expected that, but here to connect the dots for us is Benny Clavin from Ogre Skin Care. Welcome, Benny. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks very much for the opportunity to talk and um, to give you a little bit of background on our company. Sure. Can you begin by telling us how early Irish people used the bogs to improve their health? Yeah, um, actually, um, I had a little bit of difficulty he hearing that. Um, Okay, but um, but uh, but bits that I did glean from is very much in keeping with um, our you know our Celtic heritage, um, which is what we have brought into our spa offering. So um, so essentially, um, just to give you a little bit of background, I suppose on us and why we have gone that particular route. Um, Ogre Skin Care. Manufactures and designs as the typical ingredient in its range, and um, and we have elected to go to spa channel. And a couple of weeks ago, I was in Dubai um, on a trip, and I went on two spa tours, and I was advised to actually have a spa to have a theme that goes with our our product offering. And different teams that are out there is like Mediterranean and Asian and Arabic and so on, and they conjure up images like of you know, um, uh, uh, glamorous you know uh, spices and ladies etc. And it didn't really quite fit with what we have, which is nature and the bog. So I had the lucky opportunity to actually meet with a Celtic philosopher, and when she started talking, I knew that. We, I had the team that um, works well with um, our products, and she explained the whole ethos, the Celtic ethos. And you know, far from uh, some of us might have images of the Celts as being kind of somewhat barbaric because they always seem to be, uh, you know, in, in fighting and so on and so forth. But they were actually a race that were well ahead of their time, and um, and they were they. They used the peat, or at least folklore has it anyway, that they used their peat in a myriad uh, of w different ways um, t for healing purposes. And there's one particular point, and 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 that um, that ritual and tradition has carried all the way through to present day terms. You know, so it it has uh, it has spanned many millennia. Um, but there's one particular um, really interesting fact about it that. Um, when some of these Celtic warriors were in single combat during the day, at the end of a day's fighting, they would retire to the bogs themselves and share with each other their healing remedies, even though there were enemies during the day and fighting. But they used to share with each other their healing remedies at um, the end of a day's battle. And that sharing concept, there's a Gaelic word um, that is attached to it. Now, the Gaelic word, I, I, it's gone out of my head at the minute, but. They, um, it forms part of the crest of the, Ir the medical corps division of the Irish Army today. So it has come through many, many millennia all the way through to today. And there's, lo there's loads of examples of that, um, that kind of, um, you know, the ritual that they had for healing. Um, there's, there's things called sweat houses, and where, which were essentially moles, big moles in the ground, where they used to coat themselves in peat. And um, climb into these molds, and you know, some in some cases they were sick, and they used to sweat it out. And in other cases, it 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 was a time for them to reflect and contemplate on, you know, the, the year gone past and what they've achieved, and and make plans for the year ahead. And it's so it it's that kind of philosophy and ethos that we and traditions and rituals that we pulled in to our spa offering that um, is part and parcel of our products. So. Um, you know, for example, the the sweat house effect, like take, it, it, they in present day terms, it would be like a sauna like effect. You know, and 
um, where again we would have a client like that would be coated head to toe on feet and they're going to a sauna like effect. And but the same kind of ritual like of you know time taking time out to rest to be to heal. And and, and the Celts were were really big believers in that. So there were in many respects they were a race ahead of their time. And um, and women back then were hugely empowered ladies and um it's actually only when I think the Roman invasion came and did away with the whole Celtic um, kind of Druidy um, pagan uh, religion that women actually lost or, or their power were, was diluted. So, and there's many, many Celtic goddesses like that have, have a huge um, historical significance, uh, um, you know, in Ireland and. And um, and it's all again connected with this nature, which is what they believed in, um, and the whole interconnectedness of all of the energies in um, everything living. And uh, okay, I'm rambling on here, but like it's a it's a fascinating <laughs> subject. But um, and we, we and essentially we have tried to pull in all you know to give um, a sense of what we are about, what our Celtic heritage is about, like. Represented by you know the kid Mila Falsha, the the practical, the dancing, and uh, you know and that's what we're known about, known for, and we've tried to pull that into our spa offering with our Ogre products. Okay, that's I'll great. There. Our <laughs> yeah, audience you know really appreciates the products that are truly truly Irish, and I think that's coming across with what you're saying. Um, you shared yeah. with me an interesting fact that I wanted to hear more about. You told me this before that peat was being imported from Finland at one stage into Ireland. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, um, when we first started out on this journey of actually setting up the Ogre company and, and using peat, or researching peat to see what was actually in it that was so good for the skin, um, there, there's a lot of scientists, um, we say in, in kind of like Scandinavia direction, Eastern Europe um, that had already been looking at peat um, and particularly its use in skincare through the means of peat baths or balneology. And because in Ireland the, um, this whole concept never existed, and you know, we were so familiar with using peat to cut turf and for it was for heating rather than for healing. Um, it did, you know, did, in present day terms, like it was a very, very new concept. Um, but in Finland, it was regularly used um, in the treatment of skin conditions. And there is there was a local spa here in um, close to um, Tullamore here, Clara, that had been importing peat from Finland because it was the tried and tested peat at the time that was associated with skin conditions. And so they were started importing it. So it's only then when we set up and we started to we did the research on the peat in Ireland and actually found out from a, um, that there was a research um, project commissioned by a university in America which looked at a sample of bogs from all across the world and we found that actually the most potent peat in the world is actually from bogs in County Offaly which was uh, absolutely amazing to, to, to think like that we were, were importing it from Finland but we had the best stuff in the world actually at our doorstep so um, so so that's what we have capitalized on and um, and we're doing at the moment we're actually embarking on a very substantial well not embarking we're actually near completion of a very substantial um, research undertaking to actually on to to perform a full bioactive profiling of the bog and to figure out like what actually is in it that contributes so much to the therapeutic benefits um, that is able to treat skin conditions in particular, but on perfectly normal skin also to have all of the effects that to, to give the results to, to people. So um, it, it that's as I say is ongoing at the moment. It's groundbreaking. It's it, there's no precedence out there for actually um, doing this research. So it's very groundbreaking, and the results are absolutely amazing. That's that's great, Benny. And as I understand it from speaking with you prior, um, Old Crahan Man, which Ned Kelly referenced there in our interview, was actually Old Crahan Man himself was actually influential in uh, in the inspiration for starting the company. Is that right? Yeah, that, uh, he pretty much is responsible, or he's the main motivating factor for the for starting over skincare. 
um, it was, you know, as a result of how well he was preserved in the bog, and as Ned Kelly said, you know, and he explained about the fi his fingernails, um, and he, it was just so perfectly intact. And I had been actually talking to the detective that was assigned to the case when he was found, and he told me that it was his fingernails as well that fascinated him, that they were so perfectly intact that it, it, um, they were told to treat it like it had been a recent murder. And it was only when the experts came down from Dublin that they realised that they were dealing with a prehistoric body. And um, but they deciphered from that, like that, this guy had to be part of gentry; that he wasn't a working class man. And as Ned Kelly explained, that back then it was very much the tradition that if, for example, people had lost their harvest because of the bad weather, it was actually the king that ruling at the time that lost his life over it. He was held accountable for um, for you know what the weather. Uh, had in store and whether they they survived and made an, enough um, or had enough of food after the harvest. So, um, so when this guy was found, um, again it it triggered with us like gosh, you know that there has to be something in this, and we we actually partnered with Enterprise Ireland um, to actually find out do a basic research on the bog initially, and we found out like that it's just so completely full of nutrition in the form of all kinds of antioxidants and um, mineral components, all of which your body needs on a daily basis and it has it in abundance. But when you think about it, I suppose, it's not that difficult to understand because peat is, is essentially the natural decomposition of a whole heap of vegetation of, of all kinds of grasses, plants, flowers, you name it, all kinds, and each of which has its own nutritional compound. And, um, and that's what we found. And then further research has um, kind of shown uh, that uh, through precipitation, i.e. the rainfall and the compaction in the peat itself, like it creates these things called fulvic and humic acids, which are amongst the very strong antioxidants that are only be really beginning to become known to scientists. And um, and our research that we're currently doing has found that the, the molecular size of the antioxidant is capable of penetrating the skin barrier, and hence why ogre works, hence why it delivers the results, because it it's all about the healing from inside out. There's an awful lot of creams out there that promote high levels of antioxidants, but it goes nowhere other than topically on your face because it can't get through the skin barrier. Um, but what they have found, our, our research partners, LIT and Limerick, have found that um, the molecular size of the antioxidant in peat is capable of getting through the skin barrier. So we're, we know that we're on to a winner w with this particular point. It's not actually fully um, made public yet, um, but uh, it's an amazing coup to have found that out. So we're getting a, we're getting a sneak Sorry, peek I'm special. I'm rambling here. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, um, can you help us out with, um, with the name Ogre? For those of us that don't speak the Irish language, um, can you help us out with the translation there? Okay, Ogre, it, it means actually a collection of you. That's the literary meaning of it. So it's, a, it's, it's all about you. And that's the whole ethos of the brand, is kind of to bring back that natural luminosity that's naturally associated with youthful skin back to a skin that may be starting to mature in age. So it's a very, very appropriate and applicable term um, to, for, for the range. And it's, it's, it's a Gaelic name, again, it's in keeping with our heritage. And, um, and that's, what it's, yeah, that's what it stands for. It's a lovely name. And it's still, we're still able to say it, even if you don't speak Irish. It's pretty easy. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, please, oh, the, the, yeah we, we have had some feedback though that maybe it's a bit too similar to ogre and uh, it's like, <laughs> oh my god. But then, yeah. I don't think so. But we no, need an opportunity to explain rather than to run from it. So. That's right, that's right. Now to move Ogre forward, um, you're conducting a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. So tell us how yeah. the funds are going to be used for that and then also what kind of perks can we get if we contribute to the Indiegogo campaign. Okay, yeah, no, that, thanks uh, very much um, for the opportunity to explain this. Sure. Yeah, uh, um, essentially to bring to bring Ogre to the international stage, particularly with what we have found through our scientific research, um, there, there, I suppose there's two components to it. This is a gift-based um, crowdfunding campaign. So it, um, in return for pledges of various amounts, um, there are some really unique uh, um, uh, gifts to be availed of. 
And uh, so the idea would be then that the money that um, we managed to raise um, as part of this exercise would be, first of all, to complete the scientific research, to take it actually to the next level, and secondly, to bring OGRE onto the international stage. Um, and, and they're prim primarily the two big reasons. Um, so it would, uh, you know, hopefully involve an international launch, hopefully in New York, um, um, so it's maybe later this year. Um, but uh, in the first instance, uh, what we have found, like when we go out looking for partners, um, you know, to do business with, um, they invariably ask like for the validation as to how PEEP works because it's such a unique. Uh, selling point that um, it, for us it, it's really key to have the scientific research completed and that's, that's, so that's the primary goal and the secondary goal then is to take OGRA on the, onto the international stage. Great, great. So you, can, you can support us actually by, yeah, if you go onto the Indiegogo site and search for OGRA skincare. So it, there's a really fabulous um, video e-magazine book that explains the whole power of peace and um, and and it's really fascinating. Like you know, it it just presents it really well. So obviously, we would appreciate all the support that we can get. Excellent. And if we go to Indiegogo and and search for Ogra, it'll come up then, oh. and it's O G R A. Yeah. O G R A. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So so go to Indiegogo, everyone, and and make a contribution, and um, you will be receiving in exchange some lovely gifts. Um, some skincare and, and other nice things that um, are going to be provided by Ogra. So I'm sure that will be um, what everybody does right after they finish watching today. Um, yeah, okay. and if you can share it, and if you can share it with your network of folks, um, that would be like super. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pass it on. It doesn't it doesn't cost anything to share it. So so pass it on to others. You never know who might be looking for a, a very particular Irish product or a, a skincare product. So pass it on to your friends. That's a great idea. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Sure. Well, everybody, we've just about come to the end of our time here in the Wild Geese Virtual Shebeen tonight, and we want to really thank our guests, Dr. Eamon Kelly, who was here on video, and Benny Clavin from Ogre Skin Care. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Great. You can learn all about Irish bogs right now during our special focus on the wild geese Irish, and there's much more information about Ogra and our other sponsors, so please go in and check that out. Um, and this is the time where we want to thank our sponsors. Of course, uh, first and foremost is Ogre Skin Care, who was um, kind enough to sponsor us, and, and Benny to us to allow us to talk about this. Several of our other sponsors are, on, are artists and entrepreneurs who are using the bog as a resource in very creative ways. You've already heard about Ogra. There's also Inishowen Bogwood Sculptures and an artist, uh, Mary McSweeney. And there's also Bog Buddies. If you've never heard of them, you should check them out. Very cute products and great for uh, anybody who's an Irish enthusiast. Um, and lastly, we have the nonprofit Suicide Crisis Center, which is called Pieta House. And their Darkness Into Light 5K Walk Run is coming up on May the 9th in the Bronx. So um, go and support them. Also, that's a worthy cause. Um, we could not bring this feature to you without the support of these fine Irish companies and organizations. So we really encourage you to support them in return. Remember to support the Indiegogo campaign of Ogre Skin Care. Visit Indiegogo um, and search for Ogre Skin Care. Or you can email Benny at Benny at OgreSkinCare.com. That's B-E-N-N-I-E at O-G-R-A SkinCare.com. Gura Mila Malazi, everyone. Thanks for coming. And Slan, Iwa. Thanks, Kelly.